So in order to do this analysis on the computer, we're going to have to do some we're going to have to do some raster analyses um, that are a bit more involved than yesterday's. Um, and in particular, we're going to um, we're going to use map algebra. And all map algebra is, and you don't have to do it, you know, in, in um, QGIS. You can do it in R. You can do it in ArcGIS, obviously. Um, but it's it's designed for pixel-based um, structures like rasters, so you know, made up of cells. Um, and you're using, you know, you could even do it in Python, right, with the NumPy um, stuff. But but you're using the fact that at each cell you have a value and you're using the fact that in ArcGIS you can place multiple layers at the exact um, at their exact location in space and thus basically overlay that information and combine information from multiple rasters to get at an answer. So map algebra is a cell by cell combination of raster data. So you have multiple, two or more rasters and you're trying to combine the information that's at that same location. Usually you want a raster that's the same extent. You're only going to get, you know, sensical information out of this um, if the two rasters um, have the same, cover the same area. Although really, if you don't have two rasters that cover the same area, you're just going to keep the part that, that um, coincides between both of them. Um, and you also want them to be the same cell size. So the same spatial resolution, or this doesn't work as well. If you don't have two rasters that have the same spatial resolution, then you have to uh, resample um, the raster that has the finer resolution to match the, the, the coarser resolution. And students always want to do it the other way. But if you do it the other way, you're infer inferring information you don't have. And so you should avoid it um, unless you have a really good reason or some you know, other data set that could inform um, that basically, you know, that, that the part where you're making up information that isn't there. Um, so, so you do, you know, typically when I do this, it's based on Landsat data. Um, and so they're, they're, they're going to be at 30 by 30 meter spatial resolution. So I don't have an issue with this. But if you encounter that, just know you need to resample the, the finer, um, finer spatial resolution raster to the coarser cell size before you do this. There are um, a couple of components um, in map algebra. You're going to be using operators, operands, and then these functions. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the functions. And you're going to be building statements using these um, in order to answer your spatial question. So let's um, first um, cover the operators and operands. This is pretty straightforward. It's just logical, um, logical um, questions usually, or just simple mathematical operations. So they'll take the form, this is the general form. We have some operand, an operator, and another operand. So one, th this would be a raster layer. And then your operator is going to be some sort of mathematical, you know, is it, do, am I adding these layers or multiplying them or am I asking for a logical question? Is it greater than? Is it greater or equal than? Um, and then um, the, uh, the second operand could be another raster layer, but it could also be some sort of number or it could be a window analysis, which we'll cover later in, in this little lecture. Um, but here I have one raster, and I'm saying my, um, my uh, expression is going to be this raster one, layer one, plus five. All this would do is for each and every pixel, i.e. cell, in that land cover, I would add five to whatever value it was, if it made sense um, for, the, um, for the analysis I was making. Here's another one. I'm multiplying one raster by the other. Each and every pixel 
gets multiplied by the same the pixel that's at the exact same location in that other raster. You can do all sorts, you know, you can do any mathematical operation really you want. You can ask for the integer of a layer, um, take the square root, etc., etc. This is what it looks like in ArcGIS. Um, you're gonna, it's under the raster calculator um, tool in the map algebra tool set. And you'll see here are your operators. Um, you also have access to tools. You build your expression here and you um, specify an output raster. Um, this is what it looks like in QGIS, very similar. You'll have all your raster layers up here. Here are your operators, plus, multiply, um, some of the logical operators. Um, this is a uh, not. Um, and you build your expression here and then you can save it um, you, either in memory or directly permanently if you wish. And it's found in the processing toolbox, in the raster analysis um, tool set, and it also has the name raster calculator for once. They're both the same name, which is nice. Uh, not always the case. Uh, so here's just a straightforward example with a 5x5, five five, so you know, 25 pixel landscape. Um, and you're asking for this in-layer raster, that's the name of that raster, and you're asking for multiplied by 2. So notice you do 3 times 2 equals 6, 7 times 2 equals 14, etc. Here I'm asking for the sum of two raster layers. Here's my three by three, you know, raster. Here's another one, same extent, same resolution. And, and, and picture them as directly overlaid on top of each other. And you, um, since you're asking for the sum, you're just adding the pixels that correspond to each other. So two plus one, and in your output raster, you would get a three. 4 plus 4 is 8, 3 plus 3 um, is 6, etc, etc, etc. You can also do a logical ex um, um, operation, so you can ask for um, is this raster at that pixel less than this raster at that pixel? So is 1 less than 0? No. So you get a 0. So it's a, it's a, it's a, um, uh, what are they called? Well, come to me later, but zeros and ones, binary. thank you, binary raster, where zero is no and one is yes. Um, so here, let's do, so here is one less than nine, yes, so I get a one. Um, and you just go through this cell by cell. Like notice that for large rasters, this may be computationally intensive. Um, one thing that I want to point out is these no data pixels. So um, no data, or like the name implies, is a place where you don't have that particular land cover, et cetera. If you have no data less than five, you don't know the answer to that. And so you um, add a bunch of no data. Like, so here I have no data there, there, there. In this other raster, I have no data there. In the output raster, I'll have no data everywhere there was no data in both, in each of the previous rasters. So those no data can propagate. Um, and here they're asking, you know, are they equal? So I'm comparing two rasters. Um, so every place that, you know, here is one equal to zero, no. Is zero equal to zero, yes, um, etc. Uh, why did that not move forward? Okay. Um, you here's a here's just an example. It's in ArcGIS, but it looks the same in QGIS. Um, where this is the name of my raster, and I'm asking, okay, where in this raster am I greater than 2,000 meters of elevation? So this my input raster was a DEM, um, satellite derived DEM. Um, and I'm asking where am I um, above 2,000 meters um, and this is Mount Kilimanjaro and all the red pixels are, are the ones. They were yes, I am 2,000 meters above um, sea level and all of the zeros I've made transparent so you can see the DEM below it but those were all the no's. I am not 
um, below. And then if you look at the attribute table of that output um, raster, you get a cell count and you could also calculate, like Ben taught you yes yesterday, you could calculate the area that satisfies um, your, um, your query. The um, other interesting part about map algebra is there are different functions and it's basically if it's basically thinking about am I considering one pixel in my map algebra operation or I, am I um, considering neighboring pixels and how do I define those neighborhoods? Um, so in all of the examples I've showed you so far we were doing local um, operations. One cell compared to the other cell that's exactly at the same place. But you can also have um, moving windows and they're called kernels that, that, that um, propagate across the landscape in different ways. And I'll show you an, an example in a second. And you're looking at all of the pixels in that kernel in order to um, get the value of the center pixel in your output. You can also have zones from another raster or vector layer that define a certain area and within those areas you're asking for the mean or the min or the max of all the pixels in those zones. And you can also do global operation where the value depends on all of the other values in that raster. These are all the stats that are typically available, um, as you would expect, you know, minimum, maximum, range, sum, mean, um, but you can also ask for what is the majority, what, what, are, what is the majority um, pixel, um, you know, so if, if you were doing this on a land use land cover class, within a zone or a window, you should say which pixel occurs most often in my window um, or minority. Um, and you can do all the other, you know, logical statements and etc. So the local operations, like I said, were the ones where you look at one pixel in one, and a one pixel in, in the other, well, and your output is just determined by one pixel. That's the better way of putting it. Um, and really, we're going to do this worksheet first, actually. So in that worksheet, you're doing the first example. So this is going to be a local operation. You have two fake rasters that are each 16 pixels. And the operation you will be doing at this local scale, i.e. one to one pixel, um, is just the addition of both of those layers. So remember that in space, both of these would be perfectly overlaid on top of each other. 